quelque part, le gars veut pas plus que ça, là, si... Euh... Ça sera jamais une haute priorité, là, t'sais. Mais bon. <coughs> Fais des recherches, c'est ça que j'avais fait, moi. Testing one, two, one, two. All right. Mic's working. Hey, Lumi. Doing good. Yourself? Okay, doing something different today. Taking a pause, a little break from my seven wonders, and I'm going to work on some uh, exorcism.io exercises. And pull that up here. <coughs> We're going to start with 12 days. See what that is. All right. Output the lyrics to the Twelve Days of Christmas. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me blah blah blah. That's it. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Let's download this thing. Case verse describe import twelve days because expected twelve days dot recite. So we're supposed to do a static method on a class, looks like. So first day a partridge in a pear tree on the first day of Christmas. Blah, blah, blah. Recite one one two two three three on the th okay on the third day of Christmas three French hens two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree yeah 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 okay ah oh, that's interesting that is interesting. First day of Christmas, by the a partridge in a pear tree. On the second day, okay. Cites the three verses of this. The first three verses of the song. One three recites three verses from the middle of the song. Four six recites the whole song. Okay. So from verse, I get it, from verse 1 to verse 12, and this is just, okay. All right, so let's start with the first one. Uh, so we're going to call this, oh, it's already set up for us. Oh, nice. 
usually isn't. Wait. Okay, so we know we're taking two parameters. Going to call the first one uh, beginning verse, beginning verse number and uh, ending last verse. No, verser. No, 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 no. Ending a verse. Yep. Let's do that. My code here. Okay my code here. Now, what's the first test we need to pass? 1-1 one, one needs to return uh, this right here. <clears throat> da, 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 da. There we go. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, I didn't install the uh, the dependencies. There we go. Uh, let's see which. Yep. Okay. Just running the first test. <coughs> Yay! All right. Second test. If we're getting two two. Yeah. You know, this is gonna get. Uh, yep. Yeah, okay. If beginning verse is equal to two and ending verse is equal to three, now what did I do? Okay, and return. Just grab it from the test file. Like that. Run it. Boom. Oh no, actually, it's two. <coughs> okay. Did I? Uh, Oh man, what is wrong with me this morning? Okay, I didn't do that. There we go, two passed, good. Now, of course, if we keep going that way, um, this is going to get really annoying. Bunch of uh, if statements. So we got to think about some kind of data structure. to store this thing where we could retrieve uh, let's see <coughs> uh, they all end with a new line 
There's 12, 12, 12 of them, yeah. <coughs> Could simply use a what would be a good way to do this? I could use an array. I could use a map. I could use uh, some kind of enum. I could use well an object, but <clears throat> Let's think about this here. If I am to let's just uh, do this. What would be really convenient would be okay. First, I'm just trying to get a verse. But at the same time, I know I'm going to need to be able to <coughs> get a range of verses. And also, it always starts with on the day of Christmas. My true love gave to me. Although it doesn't make much of a difference if I need to store the thing. If I need to store 12 things anyways, like what difference does it make if I... Well, it takes more space and memory, I guess, but who cares about that? Sure seems clever. Well, it's less typing, although I'm copy pasting. Well, it's less copy pasting. <laughs> All right, what would that look like? Okay, first let's store. And they all need, it's not even a number. It's a letter. It's numbers written with the word. So I can't really even use interpolation. <coughs> All right, let's start off by just copying the whole thing. Oh no, that won't work. Well, it would work, but that's the simplest thing I can think of to, to get this to work. So let's do that. We're just gonna have a private song. Uh, if I just shove that in here, what does that look like? Uh huh. And then I do this. And I do that. Uh, 
Isn't there a way to continue strings? Yeah, I could use uh, string templates. Um, isn't there a third way? Okay, so I know that I can just do that, right? Uh, well, I mean that. I think the rig oh, I think it's is something like this. There's another way. There's another way to have like uh, strings split over multiple lines. Um, anyways, if I use string templates, that that's fine. I just need to make sure that. I do it uh, like this. That's the annoying thing with string temp, uh, string literals, or whatever they're called. That thingamajigger. Like that. Uh, let's get rid of this. And where's this thing end here? Like that. And then I just need to get rid of the extra spaces. Like, I don't know what they're expecting for this exercise. Probably that you don't do what I'm doing right now. <laughs> but, uh,. This will work though. Now let's get rid of this. Got a song, and we know that each one is separated by a new line, so I can easily make that into an array. So um, I can just do, oh, actually, it's true. This is static. Yeah, refactor later. Good stuff. So if this is static, I won't have access to this if I do it that way. Let's uh, make that static as well, I guess. Or I could just not put it in the class at all. Nah, let's put it in there. Uh, okay. And then I can just turn this. It just bites that I have to do this every time the function is called, but. It's not like it's very intensive on the CPU. Okay, uh, let's do const uh, song uh, is equal to um, <coughs> 12 days dot song. Uh, let's make this. Uh, can I do this split? I believe split the string into substrings. No, that's not. Yeah, yeah, that's what I want. Split it on the um, new line character. That should do it. All right, returning an array of strings. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, now that we've got that, basically return um, <clears throat> we're going to return song. I'm probably going to need some kind of a reduce or let's think about this concat maybe no. I'd need that to be in a loop. Well, let's start by just returning one verse at a time. This will get us a bunch of test cases passing. Then we'll, we'll worry about ranges after that. So, return song, boom, beginning verse. Um, minus one, 
This will just be a string. Yeah, let's run that just for fun. I think that'll do it. Maybe not. Oh, we're not using ending verse. Okay. So let's do that. Let's just put it there so that it compiles. That didn't work. Can I read property split of undefined? Really? Super interesting. So we've got our 12 days here. I've got static song. 12 days dot song split. Same thing with both of them. So they're saying Did I do something wrong? I don't see it. Static song. Oh, now I see it. <laughs> there we go. Interesting that, oh yeah, I guess it just made a type. If I look at this, there's like, oh, that's your type. No, that's my value. There you go. So now, let's run this. Okay, let's do that. Um, the second day of Christmas, it's in a parch in a pear tree. Oh. Do I have a what? I've got it's like I've got a space there. Oh. Oh, 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 right, I actually need the new line character. Crap. Uh, so maybe I can, maybe I can have two new lines. Would that work? If I split it like that. Nope. Oh yeah, of course, because I'm just... <laughs> That's dumb. Uh, if I use a regex, I think that would work. Uh, let's see. Can I use a regex on this? Split string. It's only a string. You can't pass any regex to that thing. Ritter? Really? I doubt that. Seem to recall that you can. String dot split. Oh man, it looks like you can't. Really? Separator is treated as a string or as a regular expression. Okay. They're just not giving any example of that here. There we go. Here's an example of that. So yeah, let's use a regex. It's only going to pick up the first one, I think, if I do this or maybe not we'll see no I guess the dx 
exact same thing. Oh, uh, let's do that. Damn it. <laughs> no, it's the exact same. Uh, but I could... Okay, this is getting silly. I might as well just use a map here. I might as well just use a map. That won't be much trouble to do that. Uh, is there a quick way to make an entire line a string? I wonder. If I do this. Aha! Yes. Cool. What if I did more than one line? What would happen then? No. Oh. No good. Is there a shortcut for select line? Well, I could do, let's see, shift end. Well, there you go. And then do that. Get to the beginning. Shift, uh, no. Shift end. Do that. And that shift and do that shift and do that. Structure am I going to use? I, I could just use a map and or I could just use an array, but it's straight in the array. It's probably the easiest thing to do. So let's just put a comma here and then wrap this up. <coughs> Square brackets. Oops. Okay. Just my square bracket here. There we go. I've got my array. I've got my array. Then all I need to do is uh, return twelve days. Uh, days dot song. All right, it's gonna bug me with the ending verse here. Uh, wait a minute, something's not quite right. Okay, and oh yeah, ending verse. Try this. There we go. So this should technically pass all of our 
single verse tests. It's not clever, right? Like you could probably use some kind of recursion here. Because we're just adding on to. But for now, let's just make sure that all these work. And they do. Cool. Now this is where this is going to get interesting. Uh, recites first three verses of the song. So I need to return a string. Cool. Um, I could probably do just a very simple for loop. Uh, okay, so let uh, let let result or let song part. How's that song part equal uh, an empty string? Then I can just do. Oh yeah, I can just do four. Um, let oh actually I can just use beginning verse beginning verse and then um <coughs> unless I don't want to mutate it so let's make let i equal beginning verse and then as long as i is uh, actually, this is going to be minus one, and then as long as i is smaller than ending verse, we're good. Then we increment i, and then what do we do? We do uh, song part plus equals. <coughs> um, song index. Uh, no, it's, it's 12 days. 12 days dot song index. Was declared, but it's rather, yep, I need to return that. Return a song part. Okay. Let's give that a shot. Oh ho ho! It uh, does uh, seem to work. Let's open it up to all the tests. It all works. Now, I mean, how can I make this better? Uh, the actual logic is very simple. Uh, the thing is, oh, I've got like mixed. Uh, can't believe it's not calling me out on that. Anyways. Uh, I kind of like how we actually have the song here. You know like the actual song stored. Like I I have a feeling though that when I'm going to submit this for mentoring they're going to say oh we want you to you know use like recursion instead of hard coding the whole thing. Um, I don't know that's just a, a feeling I have. 
But honestly, I don't see how it would be uh, less work. Because let's think about this. Okay, so this part... This part is always the... Well, it's not always the same. Because the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, blah, 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 changes every time. And I can't just interpolate, like, uh, the verse number. If it was a number, I could do it, but now it's, it's actually a word. So I need to have a map from, like, if I wanted to do that, I'd need to have a map from the number number to the string number the word representation of the number, so that's the one thing. And then I need like another map of the um, whatever thing that's being uh, given, right? So it seems like just as much work than just pasting the entire song to have to do that. What do you think, Lumi? Is still there? you're paying attention I'd be interesting interested to have your feedback yeah because I mean I could have like I could have this array be um, let's say uh, uh, an array of tuples tu tuples, tuples, however you pronounce that and it could be like first and then a partridge in a pear tree and then second two turtle doves and then third three French hens and then I could use that to construct but in the end I don't know. Okay, we'll see. We'll see what feedback we get from uh, the mentor. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't think they're expecting that. Oh, how did you do? Okay, uh, start end dot map I lines. Hold on, copy that here. Yeah, there's something I'm not understanding in your code there. So range start end seems to be a function that returns an array, right? Because you're calling map after that. So function that returns an array with just the uh, lines that we um, that we need, presumably. And then this is what I'm not understanding. You're mapping. 
What is this here? Lines. Where are you getting the lines from? This is what I'm not clear on. Something I'm missing here, anyways. It's your song variable. Uh, and you would have two minus one to write. So it would be this, is what you're saying? But then what what is range start end? It seems to be a function that returns an array. What is that? Beginning verse, ending verse. Dot map i song i minus function. Yeah, okay. And like I said, range start end. What is range start end? What is that function? <laughs> okay. All right. Using a library. Function to create flexibly numbered lists of integers, Andy for each and map loops, start if omitted equals zero, stop defaults to one. Oh, so it's returning an array. Okay, that's what I, <laughs> I couldn't understand. <laughs> it's returning an array of numbers in the range that you're giving it. Ah, yeah, okay. Uh-huh. I always to find those myself. Yeah, it's not a big deal to do that, but... I mean... I think what I've got is just fine. Although it could be fun to just implement it for for kicks, for kicks. but This would do it.
So then, oop, did I just, yep. to show it up. This goes in here. Wait. Missing a... There we go. Okay. And this is... Uh, Twelve days dot song. Just return this. one oh I think I know the problem we need to leave in the new line So this wouldn't work, right? simply do this. Do I even need to pass one in? If I don't, I think it just basically joins them. Nope, that didn't work either. Adds a bunch of spaces. Turning the right thing from range. Four, five, six, seven, seven, twelve. Aha, that's interesting. Three empty items, then four, five, six. Uh, right. No, this should still work. and then the 11. What? Oh. No, that doesn't make any sense. If 
start as one and end as one. So start as one. As long as i is smaller or equal to one. So you start off and you do very zero equals one. Then this gets incremented. to 2, and then huh one empty item I'll get it and what am I doing wrong here and sometimes it works. So in the case of an actual range, it works. It's just when I'm doing 1-1, one, one, Okay, problem's not here, is it? Oh, no, it is. Logging this here. I equals start. Start is 1. If i is smaller or equal to end, and end is 1 as well, then i plus plus an array i minus 1, so array is 0, is equal to i would be 1. The heck? So one and two, okay, so this is where we have a problem. So i is equal to one. And as long as i is smaller or equal to two, we keep going. So array i minus one. So one is zero. And then Zero is equal to one. So why do I have an empty item? What the heck? All right, I guess we have to. Let's look at this. interesting. My range function looks off. Well, I get that. I don't know why. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to figure out. <coughs> Just 
trying to run the debugger. 12 days, 12 days. Test, this should work. There's already a debug configuration launch program running. Really? Well, that's interesting. Where? Ah. Because corresponding JavaScript cannot be found. Whatever, punk. Workspace folder, blah, blah, blah. Do I have to build this first? Is that what this means? Test lint, blah blah blah. Ah, who's got time for that? <coughs> Anyways. Oh, I know what we could do. This will be a little easier. So that worked. What the heck? Oh, yeah, okay, that's the problem. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now I get it. <laughs> Start it can't be minus one, of course. It's got to be minus uh, let's see if my start is two. Well, always has to be minus start, I guess. Right, this should take care of it. Three, three, four, four, three, two, ten. There we go. Okay. I'll just couldn't see it. And now let's try this. Oh, I failed three tests. It's adding a. Uh, we don't want that, so let's do this here. There we go. Okay, so that's not necessarily okay. So I add one, two, three, four, five lines <coughs> in this function. Now I have one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven lines plus one. So I don't know that this is necessarily a better way to do this. It's not like this was hard to understand. I do like the functional way of doing it though. If I do this, um, <laughs> now I know that there's a probably a better way to. But anyways, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude. That's why I want I didn't want to implement it that way, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's why I didn't think it was worth doing. But yeah, that's kind of what I was seeing when I was thinking of splitting it up and using. So are you, uh, hold on, are you actually using from verse to verse map percent? Oh, you're doing it that way. Verse to verse, map recite, and here recite one. Okay. I was envis envis envisioning some sort of recursive function to um, to add the verse parts together, but yeah, this works. Cool. All right. So I'm going to go. Oh, crap. Forgot to check your. Uh... Range. So. Oh, you're using a generator. I'm really not used to using those. So, OK, so you're doing let I equals from. Yeah, OK. Well, I is smaller than two yield I plus plus and then you now you run the generator and I like it that is cool I yeah uh, yeah my mind doesn't go to generators um but that's the perfect case for that I should get used to uh, using them more because that's exactly the kind of thing we're doing. Like that's exactly what we're doing. We're generating a series of numbers. I like it. I'm stealing it. I'm stealing it. Nothing you can do about it. <coughs> Thanks. Uh, oh, it doesn't like that we don't have braces. Okay. Fine. We'll give them to you. Make this much longer. Oh. Yeah, for some reason the uh the linting on on exorcism.io wants you to not use uh, semicolons. Whatever. 
probably want to use a new line if you use braces. Yeah, that's what I was thinking then. It doesn't ask you to. The linting doesn't mind, apparently. I don't know why. But, or whatever. Let's do that. All right. So I think that's enough time spent on this one uh, exercise. I wonder if... Uh, Huh. Would there be a way to write that generator function? Um, so that, no, that would work, right? So when you, see, I don't know. That's right, it, it's like an iterator. If you actually let me let me do a little bit of this, will be good because I'm not familiar with them. Not enough, anyways. So if I do this here, uh, and I wanted to have. Let's say our start would be in here. our end also like that yeah yeah whatever uh, gen is declared never used yet if I do uh, one two five for instance so it returns an iterator that's right okay It returns an iterator. It's just a quick way to return an iterator. Okay. So one could presumably. Uh, can you use the star syntax without? Let's see. Like this. If I was to do const gen. This equals the but the arrow function no need to place it somewhere else right uh, maybe here nope maybe here <laughs> I'm just trying stuff random put it before the that's what I did didn't seem to work doesn't seem to work but it works. Oh wait, actually it doesn't. Yeah. Interesting, eh? Let's uh, do a quick search here. To write const gen function. So yeah, you can't use you can't use arrow functions. You can't make an arrow function a generator. can't sorry yeah function statement defines generate function the function syntax is intended to add an optional layer okay mm -hmm. feels like a design flaw to me <laughs> uh, blah 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 don't really care about the explanation okay so that's that but you can have uh, a narrow function that is uh, anonymous, though, right? You can't. Wait, uh, no, hold on. If I put it here. Uh, 
fighting me on this. Right? Identifier expected. Oh, it would do the same though if I was. If I just did. Uh, hold on. Would it though? No, it wouldn't. Oh, yeah, it still does. Uh, function missing. Okay, what are you? Oh, yeah, because let's just do that for now. Yeah, so that's the thing. It still does. Probably because it's a. Um, it's a, at the global level, I guess, or. Uh, what am I doing? <laughs> uh, still. Uh. Like, okay, let's try it here. No, still bugs us. What? What is this? You can't have anonymous functions? There's something I'm not getting. I'm doing something wrong, obviously. So yeah, returns an iterator. So there's no way to... Well... I could... Just because my thinking is I wanted to... Let's try this. Although returning in a generator is uh, okay. What do we have here? Yeah, that's an interesting way to do it too. I was actually thinking of doing, let's see, if I wanted to, I could do, uh, let's see. I could get range to be the actual, Generator. Could do this. Haha. <laughs> That's not bad either. <clears throat> yeah, I 
kind of like this. What I basically did is instead of uh, of course, we don't have functions like map on iterators. Now, we don't. But I'm still returning an iterator from the function range instead, and I'm just putting it in an array here instead of doing it in the range function. <coughs> Saves me having to have this. Uh, internal uh, local local function oh yeah, I think I like this I think I like it uh, Unfortunately, we don't have functions like map on iterators. Would be good to have, by the way, because if you chain many maps, filters, etc., you get better results if you use lazy sex. <laughs> lazy sex. <laughs> many <laughs> languages have that built in. Right. Right, right, right. Sequences, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, I think I'm going to, uh, for this exercise anyways, leave it at that and move on to another one. I'm satisfied with this. So exorcism, uh, submit 12, day, 12 days, not TS. Oh, one thing I want to do before I do that. Just want to make sure that. Uh, oh. Never mind then. Well, that didn't work. How about this? I don't know. Whatever. Let's just run the test suite one last time since we did some changes. Okay, good. And now. Yay! Cool. All right, so let's make sure this uploaded to uh, Exorcism. There we go. There we go. Now I can. Add twelve days exercise and solution. All right, and let's see if we can work on another one. The next one would be. Pig Latin. Okay, implement a program that translates from English to Pig Latin. Pig Latin is a made up children's language that's intended to be confusing. It obeys a few simple rules below, but when it's spoken quickly, it's really difficult for non children and non native speakers to understand. <laughs> Are they implying that it's easier to understand for children than for adults? That's interesting. Um, if a word begins with a vowel sound and an A sound to the add an A sound to the end of the word. So if a word begins with a vowel, adds an okay. Please know that XR and YT at the beginning of a word make vowel sounds. What? X makes a vowel sound. X ray becomes X ray ray. X ray A. X ray A. Y T. Y. Is that even a 
word? Yttria? the heck is that? Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Some kind of compound. Chemical compound. Yttria. Okay, if a word begins with a consonant sound, move it to the end of the word, and then add an A sound to the end of the word. Consonant sounds can be made up of multiple consonants, aka a consonant cluster. Example, chair. Airche. If a word starts with a consonant sound followed by QU, move it to the end of the word. And then add a y sound to the end of the word. Example, square. Sk. Q U. Uh, yeah. R square. Yeah, because the entire thing. Squ. Yeah. If a word contains a y after a consonant cluster, or as a second letter in a two-letter word, it makes a vowel sound. Rhythm. If a word contains a Y after a consonant cluster, or as the second letter in a two letter word, it makes a vowel sound. So, rhythm So we leave it there, is that what I don't get it. Rhythm becomes it it you're basically just taking the RH. So I don't see how that differs from rule two. And my is I may. Wow. More details here. Interesting, interesting. <clears throat> All right, well, let's download this thing. See if we can. Uh, uh, okay. Pig Latin. all the dependencies and in the meantime let's look at the test a is added to words that start with vowels so do we need to like wow I think that's gonna be complicated we're going to need to parse we're going to need to how yeah that's a tough one hmm Basically, you need to make an English parser or something. Well, how do I, how do I, how do I do this? I need, okay, so A is added to words that start with vowels. 
starts with vowels. So Okay, so we've got our rules here. So basically look at the first Alright, let's do this one at a time, I guess. So let's make a... First of all, do we have... No. Okay, so we're expecting a static translate here. Pig Latin, so... Export class Pig Latin. <coughs> And the static translate. And now we're dealing with vowels. Okay. So maybe we keep. Uh, A set. Oh man, nasty. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw that, but just killed a bug and it was pretty big and juicy. Okay. Uh, what was I doing? Oh yeah. So, const vowels. Should I make this a set? Should I make it a an object? How am I going to be using this thing? Vowels sounds we're going to call it. Now let's just keep keep it simple. Vowels. How about I make it a new set? Would that be good? If I made it a new set. Uh, and we had, uh, let's see, A, and then A, E, I, O, U, what else do we need here? A, E, I, O, U, and we're beginning with a vowel and followed by a Q. Oh. Uh, followed by a Q U. So okay, let's just keep that vowels. So switch no. Well, yeah, you can make a switch, right? Switch, and you get. Uh, what are we passing in? We're passing in this sentence. Yeah. Or the word. Is it a word? Is it a sentence? It's just a word. Okay. Sentence. It's a word. A string. So like word. Let's get the first letter. Then we can do case. Um, what kind of stuff can I do? I Vowels dot. Oh, see, that's the thing. That's what I don't like about case. The case statement. Like I can't pass in. Oh yeah, I guess I can. Yeah, 
there's no other there's no way to reference I could just leave it blank. Could that work? I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what we would get. Bell has word. Zero. And what do we do with that? We um, type boolean is not. C oh yeah, that's the problem. What if I just leave it blank? What would that do? Oops. Oops, 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 oops. What would that do? Well, that has word zero. Expression expected. Hmm. Let's just do that then. Feeling we're going to end up with a bunch of different rules and if statements and stuff. And then what happens when we do that? We return, uh, we just add A at the end, that's it, right? basically return word plus equal a to be the problem here. No, it's got to be a default, right? <coughs> so that works. And it'll work for all of these. zero or uh, or vowels has <coughs> Word zero and X 
actually that's kind of making a double check, isn't it? If, if we don't have word zero, Well, what difference does it make? Word beginning with a vowel and followed by a Q. U. It's still just the same rule. It starts with a vowel. Who cares if there's Q, U after that? That's not going to change anything. I don't get it. I don't get it, right? If I just, actually, I, yeah, I am passing this. Am I? Let's see. <coughs> yeah. So I don't know. Seems to me like all I have to do is look for vowels. All right. First letter and A are moved to the end of words that start with consonants. So I'm looking for P, K, X, Q without A following U. Oh, wait. <sighs> but anyways, we'll worry about that later. So, consonants. Well, really, I can just do else. Um, I just take the first letter, put it at the, at the end, and add A. So return uh, word <coughs> dot. Oh, yeah, there's no. There is a slice. Ooh. that slice, start at zero, get one, so that's the first letter. Oh, what does that? Returns a section of a string. Yep. So return that, so actually return word plus word dot slice, the first letter, plus, no. So return word dot, is there a splice? No. Is there a, yeah, so return word dot slice. We're looking at uh, one, and then to the end, if I don't put it, cool. Then I want the first letter. Then I want a y. I think that would work. Yeesh. Probably not the best way to do this, but I think it should work. Open this up. All right, it works. Let's keep going. Some letter clusters are treated like single consonants. So, a word beginning with CH, such as chair. I need to move words beginning with Q U. Words beginning with Q U and A preceding consonant with O and A preceding consonant. Ugh. 
Okay. So... Word beginning with CH. So let's start with that. There's a bunch of situations where it's just not a question of... Okay, so when we're looking at consonants, we need to check if becoming a monstrosity of spaghetti code. <laughs> uh, still, let's just do it one at a time. So, all right, if our first letters are C and H, this isn't going to work because it's only going to take this, what? Oh. That's right, because it didn't take the H. So let's see, I think it's pretty safe to say that We've got a consonant followed by another consonant. It's kind of a cluster of consonants. So maybe I could. Uh, how am I going to do this? It would have to be. Let me see if I can make another function for this. Uh, function, what do I need? So I pass in the word, function, my func. I don't know what I'm gonna call this, but uh, I pass in the word, get a string, it is a string. And I want to return just a string or no, I'm going to call this, it's going to return a number going to be the index of the last letter. So get consonant chain length. Something like that. And then I would need to look at each uh, letter or car, I guess, of word. Uh, actually, I want the index, so let I equals zero. I 
smaller than word dot length i plus plus Really? Expected a for of loop. Yeah, well, what if I need the index? Bum. Um, so, let's see. looking at our word I uh, so basically vowels dot has word I and if that is false right we uh, we keep going if has we keep doing not actually so if it's not true that's what we want to do so if it's not true then we simply break uh, otherwise we um, length is equal to um, I Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Actually, I don't even need to do that. I can just return I. Minus one. Or, because uh, that would return the, okay, this would return the index. <coughs> so, no, actually, uh, if I is zero, this would return the length. Yeah, because okay, let's say we're we're starting off at the first letter, which is index zero. It's a consonant, cool. Loop. Index one, which is the second letter. It's not a consonant. Okay, so let's return I. Boom, index one. And it's yeah. Okay, so that's good. Return I. Max ending return statement. Um, what if they are all vowels? Let's return zero. There we go. Okay. So then we could do. Off. Okay. Um, so instead of doing this here, we could just console the let's call it that out. I mean, and uh, get consonant chain length. Pass in the word. 
cool. We'll call that uh, consonant chain length. I guess. Uh, and then instead here what we're going to do is we're going to slice we're going to slice consonant chain length minus 1 and here we're going to slice uh, slice start and and is the index of the end of the specified portion. So yeah, so consonant chain length minus one, I believe. Let's try that. Should pass at least ten tests. Ooh, now it's no working. Some letters clus some letter clusters are treated like a single composition. We're beginning with CH, right? So chair should become air che. And I took way too much. I took I took the I and the A Y Oh Let's see what my mistake is <coughs> So I actually need to, so this will get me the first bit. that I need to remove? Then this will give me till the end, right? No, okay. No, this should have worked. What did I have? <coughs> no, this should work. So let's just do... Um, Just try this one here. <coughs> Zero. Ah, yeah, 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 silly me. So it is the opposite that I need to do. So if doom. Oh, and if there's a vowel, if there's no vowel, you keep looping. It's the minute you hit a vowel, you return the I. And then if there's, if 
for some reason there are no vowels, then you return the word length because they're all consonant. Okay. Thank you, console logging, debugging. Let's try that now. Okay, still no good. Now what? Well, you grab the C. And we left the H. Okay, so it still doesn't work. C if has an H. returning the link, I'm returning the index here, see what's going on, because that kind of changed our uh, so we'll return i plus one Does that make sense though? So we start at I zero. If it's no, that can't be it. If it's a vowel. And return zero. Right. So it's got to be that. If it's consonant, loop around, I becomes one, and let's say that the second letter was a uh, vowel, so then it's a vowel, you return one. of length. But now why do you slice off a slice work? The index of the beginning of the specified portion and the index of the end such includes its characters up to but not including. Ah okay. That was why. That's where I went wrong. And this is why this works. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, okay. So let's go with that. Uh, this will work. This will work. This will work. Yeah. Um, now our problem is a QU. We need to treat QU as a consonant. How are we going to do that? Man. Uh, so if vowel does have word, Let's 
just need to make a special case uh, where if uh, word i is equal to you and word at i minus one is equal to q and this is a little bit different we return i uh, plus one Do it. Okay. <clears throat> yep. Okay. 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 And then position of y in a word determines if it is a consonant or a vowel. It's treated like a consonant at the beginning of a word. So we're good because we didn't include it in our vowels. So this will work. Uh, y as a second letter in two letter words is considered a consonant. See what happens if I run this. No, that doesn't work. We're passing my and we're expecting my. Okay, so then that's treated differently. Treated like a vowel. Okay, so it's treated like a consonant if it's at the beginning of the word. But it's treated as a vowel. Uh, let's look at the. Uh, for it contains a Y after a consonant cluster, or as the second letter in a two letter word, it makes a vowel so sound. Uh huh. A word contains Y after a consonant cluster. Okay. So that's another special case where we would consider Y. So, hmm. Normally Y would be so it's not gonna be considered a vowel, so it also so now you need to do word dot I'm gonna check for a 
Y if you do get a Y here. Now what? Uh, well, actually, uh, oh no, that wouldn't work. Because if it's the first letter, if the words contains a Y after, blah, blah, it makes a vowel sound, yeah, so it's kind of backwards. So if it starts with it, it's a consonant. So if word equals Y, and I is bigger than zero, in other words, if it's not starting if it's not starting with Y, basically, if a gun contains Y after a constant cluster, uh, or as the second letter in a two letter word, that makes a vowel sound. So, yeah. And if it does make a vowel sound, so rhythm. You just cut off the R H M. You just cut off the M. I get it. So we just treat it. We just treat it the same way as we just return I, basically. That should work. Try that. Okay, good. Now whole phrase. Well, we're not set up for that, are we? I thought it was just words, so all right, let's switch that to phrase. Phrase. And then we'll just uh, <laughs> do uh, basically need to run this through each word in the phrase. Translate returns a okay, so this will be its own function. Okay, so first let's not do that, so we can refactor. That's interesting, why won't it let me refactor? Oh, because it's... It's a static, probably. Function translate word word string do that this okay actually this should probably be right here like that Okay, that's good. And then here, take in our phrase. We're going to make words with it. Const. Uh, actually, let's do it. Uh, we could probably use that as a mapping function. We're returning a string. It's 
So if I do, let's say, let's say I was to do phrase dot split on like that and dot um, map call in translate word then join that stuff back in and separate it with a space again and then uh, then return that let's see mm -hmm. that was easy kind of and we're done we're done I'm, I'm out of time as well Uh, but let's see, do I want to refactor this a little bit? This is this is kind of ugly. Not too complicated though, but in the case where let's see here. Translate word is kind of simple. Right? If the first letter is the vowel, cool. Let's just Return the word and add a. Otherwise, it means we're dealing with a consonant chain. Looking for Amy. Hey, did you just show up? Or you've been lurking for like an hour? <laughs> cool. Good. So, this is pretty easy to understand, I would think, except maybe this here. It's not crazy complicated, but the real problem is here in terms of readability. What is happening here? But it doesn't. Really explain what or why it's doing anything. True. So I could break this down into smaller functions appropriately named. I did. I sure did. I sure, I sure did write them down imperatively. Yep. For sure. More declarative. I agree. Totally agree. So I could, you know, I could, like for instance, this could become. <coughs> hey, well, or at least. Uh, this maybe here. It's a good first version. Yeah. It solves it. <laughs> That's for sure. Predicate transformation. If predicate is true, apply to transformation. Oh, I like that. Right, this is kind of what I'm doing here. So like if, then do that. Yeah. I think that's kind of what I ended up doing with my Bob. Uh, let's see, kind of, right? Something like closer to that, maybe. So 
I've got like the uh, the actual checks in a separate class actually. Also, your refactor on Pangram was perfect. Well, yeah, well, you pretty much gave it to me, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought that was a good idea. That was a great idea to do it the way you, uh, you suggested. Yeah, so, okay, so maybe I can do something closer to this. But that's going to have to wait for tomorrow, probably, or maybe this afternoon. We'll see. I got to go do some real work. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by.